G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Star Citizen with Mags and welcome to the 3.1 PTU, that is the public test universe. This is essentially a dev server that has public access for people to test the new 3.1 patch before it goes live and help with some of the bug fixing as well as take a look at some of the new features. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Aegis Reclaimer that will be released in patch 3.1. Now the Reclaimer is a massive Aegis industrial salvage craft. It is the first of the civilian industrial ships for Aegis to be released into the game and thus it has an entirely new look over previous Aegis ships which were quite sleek and quite modern in their military designs. The industrial civil design on the other hand not so much. The design for the Reclaimer's internals is actually heavily inspired by the Nostromo from Aliens, the very first ship to appear in an Aliens movie. It's got a very retro feel and I actually really like the design, but that's just my opinion, yours may differ. Now I will say one thing about the Reclaimer as it currently stands. Now this is the PTU. Currently there is a large number of ship systems that do not function in game at this point. For example, the MFDs in the cockpit do not currently work. The HUD for the cockpit does not currently work. The ship is flyable, but you get no information while you're actually flying it, at least not in this particular area. And I am doing the tests inside of the Arena Commander section of Star Citizen rather than the live universe, mainly because there's currently a stress test running and all of the servers are pretty much packed and trying to get onto the servers was near impossible. I did try for several hours, couldn't get on, so we had to look at it this way. But this will work for a quick tour of the ship. So as you can see, while the actual MFDs aren't displaying information, the clickables for the like the mouse interaction for the cockpit does function. You can turn the engines and the power systems on and off. That all does work. We'll step out of the cockpit now. The MFDs are raised above the pilot via a large hydraulic arm, which you can see in the background, and the right-hand arm on the seat rotates up to allow the pilot to exit, moving the joystick. Now the center console, there's nothing interactable here, but it does immediately give you a feel for what they're going for with the aesthetic for this particular ship's design. It really does scream mother from aliens. Now the second seat here, as I said, is for the claw operator's seat. I'm not entirely sold on this seat. Now it does have minimal MFDs, which is good, only two to the side and the standard joystick control. However, if you look at the glass cockpit here, the claw operator is meant to be manipulating ships directly in front of himself. However, through the glass, there is this massive set of struts in the way. I think it would be better if the the sort of the four struts that make up the core of the front window on the right hand side were removed. These struts are pretty much the same on the pilot side, but they're not so much of an issue as the MFD sit right in that spot. So the obstruction is minimal and the view isn't bad, although I do have some complaints about the MFDs themselves, which I'll go into in another video. But for the claw operator to do his job, he's going to require maximum visibility. And right now he has four massive struts sitting exactly where the ship that he's trying to work on for the reclaimer to do its job would be sitting. So I think there's going to have to be a little bit of a work done around the cockpit. I think once this ship actually gains the ability to do its job, that is immediately going to become a problem and something that is going to need to be done. I don't think removing the struts would really interfere with the overall look of the cockpit anyway. I think it would uh, it would work quite well. That's really all there is to say here. The claw is not functional, so I can't demonstrate it. So we'll just jump out of the seat and have a little bit of a look around the rest of the cockpit before we progress into the rest of the ship. Now, as you can see, there is uh, a bit of steam and uh, smoke going on in here, a bit of atmospheric effects. Again, this is in keeping with the aliens theme. Now there are two seats here, one on the left and one on the right. Exactly what their functionality is, I'm not entirely sure. There is no listing for these particular seats. Only the seat on the left hand side works and it gives you access to a standard engineering console that is present in most ships in Star Citizen that have multi-crew capability. So you can look at the, the heat transfer, energy shields and so on and so forth in this particular seat. The one on the right hand side doesn't work at all. The console does function, it does do everything that it says it should do, but I can't see what these are actually designed for. I initially thought these might be drone operator stations, but they're further in. Alright, so the second part of the command deck, and where to begin? 
We'll probably start with this console here in the center that looks ideal for a xenomorph to pop out from behind. There is four consoles here organized into two types. The first console is this one here, which is your remote turret control. The all but one of the turrets on the reclaimer are actually remote controlled and they control from this room. The second console type is a scanning station, presumably for finding wrecks and finding parts inside of wrecks and pulling them apart. There are two of each type arranged opposing one another, so there is this remote turret and on the exact opposite side is another. Again, at the moment they only have an engineering console control, identical to the one we just looked at. However, you'll notice there is a few HUD elements here. We have a green circle for where the turret is currently aiming and a sort of a, just a crosshair floating in the center. They've seemed to have tried to implement some of the systems to make the remote turret work, but it's currently not functional. I do not know whether or not this will be functional when the reclaimer is added to 3.1. It's possible it won't be. Remote turrets is a system that we have not seen before at all. Now through the window here is the main grinder. Everything that gets pulled out of the ships that you salvage gets pulled into this room. This room pulls it apart, destroys it, breaks it down into its base elements to be sorted in the rear of the ship and the salvage pens into whatever you want. And the ships can be broken down, as I understand it, either into components, so, you know, cooling systems, so on and so forth, or can be broken down into base materials. Now I'm gonna call the elevator here and get that one to come down. We have a couple of escape pods just to the right. That's the door back to the cockpit. On the other side here, we have a ladder that we will take a look at in a moment. But first, let's pause for an external look at the ship if I manage to edit this correctly. Okay, so to the right hand side of the ladder that we will have a look at in a moment, we have this door. Now, this is the single manned elevator to exit the ship. I won't use it here because it will eject us straight into space, but that's what that's for. It's the, the one man entrance and exit onto the ship when it's actually landed. And that's really all there is here on the main flight deck. The two exits from this deck are the main elevator and of course the, the ladder which we will show you the other end of in just a moment, so let's go upstairs. Now the ship has technically three main decks, there is the pilot command deck, there is the tech deck which is where we're entering now and then there is a crew deck. The pilot and tech decks are accessed by the elevator or the ladders. The crew deck is accessed by our staircase and then there's the storage in the back which is multiple decks as well. Now this ladder that I'm coming up at the moment accesses the top turret. It's the sole man turret on board the reclaimer. Now this one I have an issue with. Again this could just be a bug, a 3.1 bug so don't take this as being anything. But behind this door, I'm assuming there should be a seat that elevates up to access the turret. However, I cannot and have not been able to find any way to get this door to open so we can actually access that turret. I've looked all over it, crawled all over it, looked for switches, can't access it. So I'm hoping that'll be fixed by 3.1. It should be fixed by 3.1. We'll, uh, we'll see whether or not it actually will be. Yeah, there's that. So moving through, we have the ladder from the crew deck up into the anti-gravity chamber. This is the anti-gravity drive for the ship. It generates all of your artificial gravity. I assume it's probably going to be tied in partially to the ship's uh, gravity control for flight as well, uh, which is probably why it's fairly oversized. I'm pretty sure it's a safe bet that a lot of the ships in Star Citizen, due to their size, will use some kind of gravity manipulation technology in order to actually be able to fly at all. And so we come to the center of the tech deck, which has the pilot control stations for the remote drones. Now the reclaimer will be equipped with a number of salvage drones that it can use to assist in doing its work, removing components from the ships, uh, pulling the ships apart, even maneuvering the ships into place to be pulled apart by the claw. Again, we have an engineering console as standard when you sit in one of these seats. You can see the controls are all set up to actually fly the drones, but you just get a standard engineering console. So it is functional. 
as before it does work it does do everything that the console is meant to do but the actual intended functionality for these particular seats is currently not in game and probably not going to be in for some time i do not expect drones will be in by 3.1 so through the door and onto the other side, this is the storage area for the drones and what looks like, judging by the oil stains on the floor here, some of the maintenance area for the drones as well. Now the roof of this particular room, as you can see, has a seam running straight down the center of it and it does have supports on either side. I'm assuming at this point that that room will crack open, the entire roof will expose itself, will open up and expose this compartment to vacuum, and that's how the drones will be able to leave the ship. Other than being able to go into the room and have a look around, there's no real functionality in here. Now as we progress further into the ship, into the crew compartments, we begin to see the worn look of the Aegis Reclaimer. Now this fits in with the law for the Reclaimer. As I understand it at this point, and I don't think it's been changed, the Reclaimers are not new ships. In fact, they're a very old design that is no longer in production by Aegis, so you can't get these new. All reclaimers that are floating around in the galaxy were built quite some time ago and they are essentially traded second hand now so they have all seen you know seen their share of space and their uh, various crews and done a lot of work and you can see that you know the seats are bowed the fabrics are dirty there is exposed wiring this room has another set of escape pods as well incidentally they're all over the ship there's uh, quite a number of them but yes, the, the Reclaimer is not a new design or a new ship, which is why it has that old, worn look about it. It's something that's been in service for a very long time, and you're buying a rugged, reliable, but aged ship. So on the opposing side to the escape pods, we have this room, which is the mainframe. Again, there's nothing we can manipulate in here, but you can see some very 80s, very alien-inspired retro computers in here. This is the, the master mainframe for the Reclaimer. If you're a hacker in the universe when uh, the game is actually live, that mainframe room is probably going to be the room you're after. From there, you should be able to take control of all of the ship's systems. So we go up the staircase and welcome to the kitchen area. And it's this part of the ship that we can really begin seeing the alien's influence coming out. This looks like the perfect table to birth a xenomorph on, doesn't it? Now, while the entire table has bench seats around it, the seats are divided into three sitting areas on each side. So you can have up to six people sitting down as it currently stands. There's a small kitchenette over here. We've got a coffee machine and a bunch of tubs and bins to hold all of the food for the crew. There's actually, well in a retro microwave as well I should add, there's actually three coffee machines on this ship which makes me really want to get one just on that alone. Now looking out the window we are viewing the right hand side or the starboard side of the ship. It could be in my imagination but that window actually looks smaller than the windows in the other sections of the ship. Uh, we've got a small TV that overlooks the coffee table, it looks like it's displaying information on ship systems, which is appropriate, but again, it can't be manipulated. The other coffee, or the other food preparation area on the other side, it's essentially a mirror of the one on the other side of the room, just dressed up slightly differently. And here, we have the docking collar, which is through here. Now, the docking collar, or docking in general, is not a functionality that is expected to be in Star Citizen until after it's released, so this room has been prepped for that but it's probably not going to have functionality for some time now exactly how it works whether or not a ladder is going to extend out of that hatch or whether or not this entire room goes into zero g when the ship is docked is unclear but that's where that is So just coming off the kitchen, we have the main habitation corridor. We get two door options here, and we're going to take this one first. This is the captain's quarters. So the captain has a little bit of storage on the side of the room. We have a large desk area with a couple of screens. Now behind the desk, we have these shelves. This looks like the ideal spot for all those hangar flares that many of us have been collecting over the years to actually put on display. This is your small plants, your ship models, so on and so forth. Looks like a perfect place for them. Now we have a window here, as I said, the window looks slightly larger in the captain's quarters, although it could be perspective. Again, looking out to the starboard side of the ship, and the captain has his own small kitchenette again, with the third coffee machine, another microwave, and some storage bins for food. Then he has his own room off the side. Now the bed is fully functional, you can hop in. It uh, doesn't 
do anything else at this point in time. A 3.1 is meant to be having some level of persistence, so you should be able to log out in the bed, but I'm not entirely sure how well that functionality is going to work. We'll have to find out. And that's a cool little animation. And then we have a small door off to the right for some, again, for some clothing, storage for clothing, and a door off to the left which leads to the captain's personal bathroom. Now, the mirror currently has no reflection, as you can see. Uh, there is a sink. You have a shower just off to our right over here. And a shitter with a first aid kit. So, yeah, there we go. Captain's shitter. So, exiting back out back through the door and directly on the opposite side we have the crew quarters. So again we have a little bit of storage to the left hand side, we have, well there's actually quite a lot of storage in here, we have two here, there's a couple more lockers at the end and then each of the beds have lockers next to them and somebody's got to fix that sparking, that really needs some maintenance done to it. Two screens at the end of the beds, four beds in total. As you can see, the, the storage here opens and closes and doesn't sing as well. You can get in and out of all the beds. They all work. Again, pretty much the same as the captain's bed in that regard. Whether or how functional they're going to be is... Well, we'll see. What the hell is coming out of the bottom of that medical? You know what? I, I don't even want to know. Anyways, um, yes, we have the bathroom for the crew, so some toilet roll storage and so on. Most of this should be able to be adjusted as you want. We've got a couple of sinks. We have these. Now, crew showers, not quite as private as the captain's, and two shitters for the crew as well. So, there it is. And black smoke is not anything that I want coming into my bathroom, just personally, but... Anyways, we get a bit of a steam effect in there as well, again, going back to the Aliens theme, trying to make things a little bit eerie, and of course the crew has their own window, which again looks to be larger than the one in the kitchenette. Uh, that leads out to the port side of the ship, and we can look, if we get it just right, we can actually see the hydraulics for the landing gear. I would love to be able to show you those, but there's really bugger all places to actually land it inside of Arena Commander. But yeah, anyways, that's the crew quarters. So there's uh, room in there for four crew, plus the captain for a crew of five, although you could potentially hot swap the bunks. Now, in this room, uh, we'll call the elevator just for a start and get it doing its thing. Actually, the elevator's already there. Never mind. We will uh, go through there in just a second. So we have two doors off of either side, but first let's go down the ladder. And speaking of areas that are in need of a little bit of maintenance, you're going to love this place, although the atmosphere is quite cool. So this is part of the main engineering deck, and as you can see, uh, we have a couple of leaks in here. There's a nice fog effect, again, just for the view, and... Correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks like it has been heavily inspired by the self-destruct mechanism on the Nostromo. Actually, the whole room is screaming Nostromo. So anyways, this is the main engineering area. I'm assuming this is a major part of the power plant. There is a console here, completely unfunctional or non-functional for this particular console. And it's accessed only via the ladders. So that's all there is to see there. Now, back onto this section of the deck. Now we have these two doors. Now these are the airlocks to go outside. So we've got one here on the left hand side, we have one over here to our right. We'll uh, jump out and do a quick run around the ship. And just got our, there we go, seal off the airlock and out into space we go. And this gives you a good look at the actual scale of this monster. This is, for the record, the biggest ship in Star Citizen at this point. This thing is very, very near the size of an Idris, I believe. Definitely the size of a Polaris Corvette. And yeah, it, it's an absolute monster. Um, so we could go back inside here. But instead, what we'll do is close the door on this side and we'll uh, do a little bit of a shot over the top of the hull. Now, we can see a couple of the turrets here. Now, we've got one over there. That's the man turret. That's the one that you can actually get inside of. So we'll, uh, actually we'll take a look at this one first because it's closer. 
Now, as you can see in this one, it's got a little lighting array on top of it, but no actual room for seating. So this one here is designed to be completely controlled by a remote. Now, if we go down the other end, just take a quick look at the hydraulics here. That's our other airlock to get inside. You can see the crew cabin window on this side. Now, there is spots for other windows down the side of the ship, but they're currently closed. So I'm assuming you'll be able to open them if you want to. Uh, again, I haven't seen any functionality for that just yet. And here's the Ford turret. And as you can see, we've got a seat inside of this one. So this is the one that is actually manned, the one that I could not access before. But it is a manned turret. I'm not entirely sure about the guns. They, they look like the size 5s. I'm going to have to have a look at the specs for the ship. I didn't actually check the size of the turrets, but I think those are size 5 laser cannons. They look very close to what I used to uh, stick on the front of my uh, stick on the front of my Vanguard Warden, at the very least. Yeah. Anyways, that's pretty much everything out here. So we're just going to shoot over to the other side of the ship. Got a little bit of debris floating around the ship at this time. Yeah, glamour shot. Alright, let's get back in here. Now we've got the rear landing legs over here, which also have thrusters on them, I believe. And just over here, there it is. Almost lost the door then. Entry back through the airlock. So we'll just quickly close these up and we'll go to the elevator in the rear section of the ship. Let's be closer to activate the buttons. There we go. Okay, so now back in the other side, call elevator, open up the door, make sure the panels are down before you walk through. You can fall through there if you walk through, uh, walk too fast, so be careful about that. And we have a couple of options here. So first let's go to, we're on habitation deck at the moment. We'll go to the salvage balcony. Our exit. Now this is the large rear section of the ship. This is where all the storage for everything that the reclaimer actually does happens. So the balcony is obviously an observation deck for the salvage room. As the reclaimer pulls ships apart, all of the material that is pulled out of the ships, once it has gone through processing, is stored in here. Now this is a surprisingly small room compared to the size of the ship. It's only well, just looking at it, about one and a half to two times the size of the cargo bay in the Starfarer for a ship that's three to four times the size, but it's not the only cargo bay that's in this ship. This is just the area for the salvage materials that the Reclaimer picks up as it pulls ships apart. So we'll recall the elevator here. And this time we'll go to the salvage hold. Now the salvage hold isn't actually the room that we were just in. It's the room underneath it. That large room actually has a second layer underneath. Exactly what functionality there is of having two split rooms, I'm not entirely sure. But this is the access point for the second one. If you walk into it and you look up, you can actually see through the gratings into the floor of the room above. Now, at the end of this room, we have a... Looks like a cargo slot, I guess is the, probably the best term I can think of it for it. That is marked to lead down into the main cargo hold, which is the next storage area we're going to be going to. So obviously all the salvage comes in here, it gets sorted out into what it is, and then some of the salvage can be transferred via that, uh, that port down into the main cargo hold. And last but not least, we have the main cargo hold. Now, the cargo hold is comparable in size to the Starfarer. Again, this is... Well, this is less about what the salvager itself picks up and more about your supplies for the actual journey. So you'd store food and repair parts and whatnot else in here. Um, and obviously, some of the salvage can be ported into that room as well. And then the last spot to go to, exit to the surface. 
Now obviously we are not landed at the moment, so this is just going to drop the elevator straight out into hard vacuum. And this is, well, when the ship is landed at least, this would take us all the way to the ground. This would be the equivalent to the main cargo bay access in, say, a constellation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Aegis Reclaimer Tour. That's all of its internal spaces. The ship itself is... Well, it's a monster. You just sort of look at it. She is huge. But the internal spacing is surprisingly small for the size of the ship. I originally would have expected this to be a hell of a lot larger inside than it actually is. But I do like what's there. I do like her look. I do like her aesthetic. I am actually rather disappointed that I don't own one. I only have access to this ship because I am currently on the PTU. Once 3.1 goes live the reclaimer goes away and I'll have to hitch a ride with somebody else to take a look at her again. But she is a very nice ship. I think I'm going to put her on my short list once Star Citizen goes live to be one of the ships that I purchase in-game for the in-game money. So we'll move all the way back around to the front of the ship and back to the cockpit where we first started. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. As always, feel free to check the video description down below for links to my social media, links to my Twitch, and links to my Patreon. And of course, you'll also find links to my Star Citizen org. Feel free to join. Recruitment is currently open. Until next time, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, take care and I'll catch you around the verse.